Portland, Oregon gets an average of 37 inches of rain each year. You can use the rain that runs off your roof or paved services as a resource by creating a rain garden. A rain garden is a shallow landscape depression that soaks up stormwater runoff and allows it to soak into the ground. Rain gardens filter pollutants as water soaks into the ground, replenish groundwater, and can provide habitat for birds and beneficial insects. A rain garden can also be an attractive garden feature. But the greatest benefit from containing stormwater runoff on your property is that it reduces demand on the sewer system and protects rivers, streams, and groundwater. We're going to show you the basics of how to design, build, and maintain a rain garden that meets City of Portland's safety recommendations. And we'll have some suggestions for resources to help you make informed plant decisions. First, we'll review the steps of designing your rain garden. This includes assessing your site, testing your soil infiltration, and determining the size and location of your rain garden. The first step in site assessment is very important. Call 1-800-332-2344 before you dig to make sure your project doesn't damage underground utilities. The service is free and it's required by state law. The best place for your rain garden is where it will easily accommodate runoff. Observe where rain hitting roofs or paved areas goes now. We are looking at building two rain gardens, one on each side of the front walkway to most easily catch water from downspouts at the front of the house. But before deciding for sure, we'll do some more planning. Start by drawing a simple sketch of your site. If you live in the city of Portland, you can print an aerial view of your property from www.portlandmaps.com. Mark the locations of your downspouts and paved areas. Consider how you might move a downspout or change the slope of a gutter if necessary so that rain drains to the right location. You can also consider removing paved surfaces to create a new space for a rain garden. Estimate the square footage of the roof area or pavement that will drain into your rain garden and sketch in the areas that seem like the best places for a rain garden. You'll want to build a rain garden in a relatively flat area to best contain the water and to prevent soil stability or erosion problems. A naturally low spot with good drainage is ideal. You may need to add or remove soil in front or behind your rain garden to make sure the water always flows away from your house. Avoid building a rain garden where water already ponds. That's a good sign that the soil in that area doesn't drain well. Also, avoid building rain gardens under existing tree canopies to protect tree roots. In the city of Portland, most residential rain gardens will not require city permits. There are some special conditions that will require permits, such as extremely large rain gardens, steep slopes, or poorly draining soils. If any of these conditions apply to your property, you may need to consider other options to safely manage stormwater. To find out more, see the resources section at the end of the video. Even if permits are not required, you should still include the following safety recommendations for your rain garden. Disconnected downspouts should discharge water at least six feet away from a basement and two feet away from crawl space or slab foundations. The deepest part of the rain garden needs to be at least five feet away from neighboring properties, three feet from public sidewalks, and at least 10 feet from any retaining walls. The deepest part of the rain garden should also be at least 10 feet away from any structure. Do not build your rain garden over a septic system, drain field, gas line, or underground oil tank, and keep well away from sloped areas. The area of the rain garden should be at least 10% of the roof area it drains. The size of the rain garden will depend on the ability of the soil to soak water into the ground. An infiltration test will help you determine the size. We tested our infiltration by digging a hole two feet deep and two feet wide where the deepest part of the rain garden will be. Drainage in your yard may not be uniform, so you may want to test the soils in several locations. To test for permeability, fill the hole with water and let it drain completely. Then fill it again and monitor how fast the water drains. If the second filling drains two inches after one hour and drains completely within 24 hours, this is a good spot to locate a rain garden. In this case, a rain garden sized at least 10% of the roof area draining to it should do. If the second filling drains less than two inches per hour, increase the size of your rain garden 5% of the roof area for each half inch of infiltration rate you lose. You can also improve drainage by adding additional sand, river rock, or garden compost. If drainage is less than one inch per hour, this is not likely to be a good location for a rain garden. 
Remember that building a rain garden that is too small for the water to soak safely into the ground on your property is not recommended. Now that we've determined a good location to build a rain garden, we can start building it. You can build your rain garden by yourself, or it makes a fun group activity. For our example rain garden construction, we're working with Blossom Earthworks of Portland, Oregon. First, we'll outline the area we're going to dig. You can outline an area using landscape paint, marking flags, a garden hose, or stakes and string. The area of our rain garden was way too dry and hard to dig easily, so we pre-soaked the ground with a garden hose well ahead of time. This made the soil loose, but not too wet, which would cause compaction problems. In building our rain garden, we'll remove grass from the lawn area and we will carefully stockpile the soil to reuse for side berms. If you don't reuse any soil or plants removed from the site, make sure to dispose of these appropriately. We will start by digging along the outline that we've marked. We have shaped the side slopes of our rain garden by working inwards, making the bottom of our rain garden about 12 inches deep as measured from the sides of the bermed edges. The depth will be maintained in the finished garden since we'll add compost evenly on the side berms and interior of the rain garden as it is finished. Now we're ready to mix in compost to amend the soil and aid in plant establishment. For well-draining soil, add one yard of compost for every 80 square feet of rain garden, blending compost into the top 12 inches of the soil layer. Try not to damage the soil structure by trampling or compacting the work area. Once you have finished amending the soil, rake the garden to your desired finished shape and depth. The finished depth should be about 12 inches at the center with gentle side slopes. The deepest part of the rain garden is 10 feet or more from any structures. Be sure to grade the rain garden to include an emergency escape route for rainwater from really heavy storms. This can be a low spot along one side that will allow water to escape to the yard or the street and not back toward any building or neighboring property. You can use rock to prevent erosion and help define your escape route. Now we're ready to plant. For the base of the rain garden we use spreading rush and orange sedge planted densely to help crowd out weeds and assist with plant establishment. Sword fern and Oregon grape have been used as transition around the edges with kinikinik for ground cover. For best success, pick plant species based on the light and water conditions of your rain garden. Native species are best since they can tolerate wet conditions during the winter and prolong dry conditions in summer and need minimal care once established. There are plenty of plant stores and nurseries in the greater Portland area that can help you pick out appropriate plants for your rain garden. Now that our rain garden is almost complete, we'll add a layer of compost as a mulch to prevent erosion, provide nutrients to the plants, and give it a finished look. Adding a two-inch layer of river rock or pea gravel to the garden is not necessary, but it creates a clean look and provides a good surface to stand in when maintaining your rain garden. To get the water from the downspout to the rain garden, we're going to show three different options, a buried ABS pipe, a lined swale, and a surface downspout extension. When using a buried ABS pipe to convey water from the downspout to the rain garden, the pipe must be covered with at least a foot of soil, except for the outlet where it daylights into the rain garden. The pipe should gently slope towards the outlet at a rate of one inch drop for every 10 linear feet of pipe. Keep in mind that the finished depth of your rain garden needs to accommodate the gentle downward slope of the pipe and 12 inches of soil coverage on top of the pipe. To help reduce the excavated depth of your rain garden, trench the pipe part way down as we've done here and then reuse soil excavated from the middle of the rain garden to build soil depth above the pipe to 12 inches. For a lined swale, use a two foot wide piece of 30 millimeter pond liner that extends out at least two feet away from slab foundations or six feet away from basements. Bury the pond liner under gravel or river rock so it creates a shallow creek bed that drains water away from the foundation and into the rain garden. If using a downspout extension, make sure that the end of the downspout is two feet away from slab foundations and six feet away from basements. For step-by-step -step instructions on safely disconnecting a downspout, go to the websites listed at the end of this program. Choose the time to direct your downspouts to the rain garden based on your site conditions. We will route the downspouts to our rain garden during fall construction to allow plants to establish during winter rains. Make sure you safely convey the stormwater using approved materials and techniques. Always plug or cap your downspout standpipe to make sure that nothing goes in or comes out of the sewer or pipes. Now that we've completed our rain garden project, we will still need to maintain it so that it continues to be an attractive amenity and stormwater resource. 
We'll need to water these plants with a garden hose during any long summer dry spells for the first year or so, but after the plants are well established, water from the downspout should be enough. Give your rain garden a healthy start. Inspect it regularly and especially after a heavy rain. Keep it well watered in the first year, irrigating deeply about once a week during any dry spells. Remove sediment and debris. Watch for erosion. Prune or replace plants if needed. Use a thick mulch or layer of compost to help nourish the plants and reduce weeds. Pull any weeds by hand. Do not use chemical weed killers or chemical fertilizers. Make sure gutters and downspouts are clear of debris and are secure to the building. Your rain garden may change and evolve over time as you find out what works best in your yard or as you discover new native plants to try. If a plant is not thriving where you first placed it, consult a reputable source of gardening information and try it in a new location if advised. Sometimes it's not easy to tell where a plant will grow best until after the first growing season. By infiltrating stormwater on your property with a rain garden, you're helping keep Portland's rivers, streams, and watersheds clean and healthy. For additional resources about building your rain garden and other stormwater management options, visit the Technical Assistance section of the Clean River Rewards website. Here you can view publications or videos on disconnecting downspouts, other stormwater options, and plant choices. You can also learn about maintenance and registering for a ratepayer discount on the stormwater management portion of your sewer bill. For more information, call us at 503-823-7740 and visit the Bureau of Environmental Services website at www.portlandoregon.gov BES. You'll find more stormwater management options, maintenance information, and other Clean River resources.